Welcome back to the Great Sports Debate. It was time to pick MVPs for the NBA, and I know you'll recognize the names up for consideration. Okay, the NBA is getting into its final weeks before the playoffs, and already the debate is beginning. Who is the most valuable player this season? We'll go to our expert, Bob Ford. Bob, who is the most valuable player this year in the NBA? There's a lot of good choices. Magic Johnson has kept the, the Lakers from falling apart. David Robinson has obviously been a dominating player for San Antonio. Charles Barkley's had a very good year, although very controversial year for the Sixers. My MVP would be Michael Jordan. The guy's <laughs> leading the league in scoring. He's absolutely the best player on the planet, and he's got that team playing, although you wouldn't have known it from yesterday's game, at a championship level. Well, Bob, you saw in yesterday's game, you saw what's wrong with Michael Jordan. 41 points, they lose. Friday night, what was it, 38 points, they lose. What? They get into crunch time, Michael says, give me the ball and get out of my way. It doesn't work. You well, gotta be a member of the team. standings and you see gotta if it be works. a member of the team. You are this such year. a one note, Johnny, and your hatred, your unfounded hatred for Michael Jordan is just revealing itself and its ugliness right now. The rap on Michael Jordan has always been that he scored a lot of points, but the team didn't win. Right. This year, the team's winning. This year, the team's regular this season year, games. Team, well, Show you, it to me in the well, playoffs. Well, MVP is done I for the regular season. The you this do year, it the regular this, season. This year, that team is arguably the best team in basketball. Okay? Yeah. It's either the Bulls or Portland. Arguably is the functional word here. He is singularly, without a question, the best player in basketball. And just because you have some unfounded individually hatred for the no. man who is, in addition, this a decent incorrect. guy, you are, who's your choice? Individually, you have no choice. Individually, he is the best player in basketball. He's right. one of the, other than Wilt, he may be the best single talent ever in and basketball. And his team is the best team. But, 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 but yeah. you're a he butt. is not helping his teammates progress. I hate Michael Jordan. Hated him then. Hate him now. Every once in a while, even my old, old opinions were correct. He became exactly what I figured he was, all about the money and nothing else. And him being a laughing stock in the final years in the NBA were a wonderful moment for me. I never was Michael Jordan's biggest fan of Michael Jordan, the guy. I always thought there's a bit of phoniness in him, but I was always able, even back in 91, when we were young and naive, to separate that uh, you know, him kind of the phony from him being this incredibly great player. I think what Angelo saw back then was Jordan was horning in on the territory of Wilt Chamberlain as the greatest player ever, and Angelo couldn't abide by that, so he decided early he wasn't going to like the guy. Well, si after 1991, Jordan won, I don't know how many of the six, seven titles. I mean, all of those titles and did establish himself as the best player ever. You know, Angelo's uh, he's difficult to convince of the obvious sometimes. It's time for my favorite segment of the day. Of course, that would be Weasel of the Week. Let's go to right. Glenn I, th I think Mack you'll now. agree with me on yeah. this one because the Weasel of the Week is Dwayne Shinsius, the rookie backup center for the San Antonio Spurs. Dwayne Shinsius was fined, how much was he fined? $10,000 this past week for exceeding his weight limit in his contract. He's supposed to weigh no more than 260. He weighed 270 pounds. Why did this happen? Dwayne Shinsius said it happened because he was weighed while wearing his winter overcoat. <laughs> Two questions. <gasps> what an idiot. He plays in San Antonio. How much of an overcoat does he need? Right. Second of all, how much effort does it take to take off the overcoat if you're going to be weighed for a weight incentive? <laughs> Weasel of the Week. <laughs> Not a bad one. All right, Stan Hockman, Weasel of the Week. Well, mine is Curry Kirkpatrick, the chorus boy type guy that writes, covers college basketball for Sports Illustrated. In his story about the Nevada Las Vegas loss to Duke, he quotes uh, Jerry Tarkanian as using obscenities to describe some of the play of two of his star players, then admits he didn't hear it, but he got it from a reliable source. If that isn't bad enough, he then cites the team's motto, which he says they borrowed from a mobster. The motto being, the thrill ain't in the winning, it's in the collecting. And then he puts in a parenthesis of debts. Anybody who has been to Las Vegas knows that the thrill is in gambling and that that whole city is built around gambling. It isn't enough to pick the winning team. The excitement comes when you go to the window to collect, and that's what that motto was all about. So he, he warped and distorted the motto. He took a cheap shot at, at Tarkanian, and he's my weasel. Stan, right, but I think that Sports Illustrated is sending the chopper after you yeah. right now. 
But Stanley, I, I was under the impression you really enjoyed his TV work than during the NCAA <laughs> tournament, didn't you? That was a whole nother matter. All right, let's go to Bob Ford for his Weasel of the Week. What's a chorus boy stand up with? <laughs> My Weasel of the Week is whoever came up with the idea for the new baseball publication, Baseball Week. It's put out by our good friends at USA Today. And what it basically does is pander to the love of statistics that some people have in baseball, which to me strips away the beauty of the game. People that can only talk about baseball in terms of the numbers, in terms of the rotisserie league, in terms of who they're going to trade for, and they completely miss the ball and the bat and the grass. And I just don't want to see any more of it, and I hope they lose a lot of money. All right. My weasel of the week. I have two, and I can't make up my mind, so I'm going to throw them both out there. First of all, you got Bobby Knight, all right? Now, Bobby Knight is a great coach at Indiana, and nobody's going to take that away from him. But he's had this running war with the media for a long time. And he says the media doesn't print the facts as they are, and the media shouldn't have the access that they want to the various players, et cetera, et cetera. Well, this last week, Bobby Knight finally got an opportunity to become a member of the media. Out in Indianapolis, a paper hired him to write during the NCAA Final Four. And the tripe that came out of this guy's typewriter, you would not believe. He, he, about one game he wrote, both teams were coached quite brilliantly. And, and the players were all very well schooled in the games. And he gave you all obvious prattle, baloney, stuff nobody wanted to hear. Bobby finally had a chance to prove to the people in the media that he could do it better than they could. And basically, he was out of bounds. He blew it, all right? So Bobby Knight is one weasel. But the big weasel, the guy that you can't go a week without mentioning, is Tom Selleck. I don't know if anybody <laughs> saw what this weasel did, all right? Tom Selleck, right, for the past two seasons, the last two months of last season and the first month of this season, has been hanging out with Glenn Macnow's buddies on the Detroit Tigers and some of the other teams. Why? Preparation for a movie role, he said. Give me a break. Did this guy spend six months in a maternity ward before he did three, three men and a baby? No. Did he, did he hang out in, in writers' forums before he did My Alibi or whatever that clunkhead uh, movie was? The fact <laughs> of the matter is, this guy used it as an excuse to play some ball and hang out with some ball players, right? And what does he do? He even convinces the Tigers. Now I'm really getting on a yeah, roll. Rolling, yeah. right? He convinces the Tigers to, to fake a little stunt and get him on the roster for a day. And they put this guy uh, into an exhibition game, and he strikes out against the Cincinnati Reds. First of all, I don't want to see Tom Selleck involved in any baseball games. And second of all, don't give me this baloney that you're using it to research a role. We've seen your work. Forget about it. He is the weasel of the week as far as I'm concerned. From the weasels of April 91 to final words, stay tuned. That's what's up next.